Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Corte Madera Planning Commission for Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. Our first meeting of the year. Please call the roll. All right, Commissioner Kenny. Here. Commissioner Montoya. Here. Commissioner Dandel. Here. Vice Chair Rizzo. Here. And Chair Chase. I'd be present. All right. Join me in a salute to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We now open the meeting to uh, public comment for that which is not on tonight's agenda. Comments are limited to three minutes. Um, so if you have something to say, um, please step up to the podium or raise your hand online. What do you say, Tracy? No raised hands online, Tracy. Okay, thank you. So then we will close that open public comment and we will go directly to our new hearings tonight. So we have two new hearings. Um, I believe that the first one um, will not take a lot of time. So I think we'll proceed with that first as it is on the agenda. That is uh, 421 Corte Madera Town Center. This is a signed permit application for one new illuminated sign at the Xfinity store at 421 Corte Madera Town Center. Uh, this is a facility there that they've had a um, banner up in the window. And sure enough, here we are, Tracy. Thank you, Chair Chase and Commissioners, good evening. As Peter said, um, we are Conducting a public hearing for one new illuminated sign at the Xfinity store. Um, it's been our past practice to take um, signs at the town center that face the exterior, that face the glass to the planning commission for review. In the recent past, the planning commission has reviewed um, several signs that didn't also uh, include a tenant improvement or exterior, cha of exterior changes. Those were um, just food for dogs, um, Carbon Health, Rite Aid, T Mobile. Ohio signs. The <clears throat> project site is 421 Corner Madera Town Center. Um, it's located near the west entry of the Town Center Mall. Uh, to the west, about 300 feet away, is the uh, Madera Gardens subdivision, residential neighborhood. The property is zoned C2 Regional Shopping. And this is a photo of existing conditions at the site. As Peter said, there is some brand new window covering some at the moment. And the main entry doors, as I stated before, uh, to the tenant's face, they're facing the west. Pedestrian access is via a set of stairs in front of the entry. And no changes are proposed um, to the exterior of the building um, other than the sign and removal of the three gooseneck lights and the wood sign backer panel that was installed by the previous tenant, which was Harvest Home. Um, there is a tenant improvement that's limited to the interior of the store and construction is currently um, underway. And the proposed sign is going to be mounted above the entry doors. Um, there's one illuminated sign um, reading at Xfinity. Um, the uh, sign is 18.48 square feet in the area. That will be white channel letters and internally is LED lights. The sign meets the town center design guidelines and the town sign ordinance. Staff can make all required design review findings for the sign. Recommends approval of, of this application. Um, I'm here for questions. If you have any, and the um, applicant is here as well, if you have questions for the applicant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, does anybody on the dais have any questions for Tracy on this item? Yeah, nothing. Valerie, nothing. Okay. Over here. Where? No. Jim? 
I think the only question I had was um, it does look like there's some wood on the storefront and wood doors that kind of don't mean they meet their branding. I'm wondering if that was going to, if that's allowed to come through as just a kind of exterior tenant improvement without coming to um, us for review. Just, yeah, they, right yeah they, they, on the verticals and it looks like there's some, some of the um, recycled lumber. I don't really have a, a negative comment about it. I was just curious. I think um, that would come to us. The, the sign permit requires design review approval mm -hmm. and then to the findings would need to be made. And um, certainly the last finding is most relevant to any sign permit application. And I think if they were to remove those doors or replace them really in kind and not change in only the materiality yeah. or match other tenant yeah. spaces with sort of steel doors, yeah. that we would think that that would be consistent with the design yeah. review approval. Um, that was not included on their building permit, um, but certainly um, uh, a revision, have a revision back, should be submitted and they could come back to that. Um, I also uh, asked the question if the awning was uh, proposed to come off, and it's not at this time, although they may decide uh, that that's something that was on the light gray sort of awning position above. Would, could that be done on a staff level, or do you have to bring that back to us? Um, given... Um, there's an existing design review. I think that at staff level, if it was very minimal in scope, that we could interpret as being consistent, approved design review. Or if it maybe there was some question about um, whether or not it should be publicly noticed, we could publicly notice oh. an amendment and process it at staff level. Yes. I'm just thinking the less work, the better. I just, it just yep. seems to me it might change it in the future. But that was just my question regarding that design review. Thank you. All right. So I don't have any questions for you guys. So does the applicant wish to uh, make a statement or a presentation? No. <laughs> it speaks for itself. Okay. Um, uh, we'll take public comment on this. Uh, I don't know if anybody in the room wants to stand up and comment on this application uh, or if you have anybody online, Tracy. Uh, no hands are raised online. Okay. All right. So thank you. Uh, then we'll take it back up here uh, and talk about it and um, see if there are any comments from the commissioners about this. Um, I, before we get to it, I just wanted to point out that the application states that the color temp is a warmer color temp. So this is not a, a blue white or you know sign up there. And that the conditions of approval point out that if it's determined um, by staff that it's too bright, then the uh, applicant agrees to turn the sign down in brightness. So um, it's right. sort of a period or it's, I don't know, what we don't have a definition for that process, but if it's determined that it's too bright, then you take it to back to the applicant and have them turn it down. Correct. We review after installation um, and really it's relative to other signs in the vicinity and Try not to have something shining like a beacon uh, or based on any, really any feedback or complaints that maybe particularly that it's facing um, residential across the street. Okay. So commentary or discussion, uh, starting with you, Margaret, about this sign. I don't have any uh, objection to the sign. I uh, kind of wondered about on the staff report, page three, it says that the project requiring that the illuminated sign be turned off at the close of business or 11 p.m., whichever is later. What What is the close of business of this, of Xfinity? I assume it's earlier than 11 p.m. Most stores at the center, like the Xfinity store, are closing around 9 o'clock. Um, they would not be able to be open after 11 o'clock without a use permit, so certainly prior to that. So if the if it was determined that the illuminated sign, I'm sorry, this should have been asked on questions. <laughs> um, it says it's controlled by dimmers. So if it's too bright, would the dimmer be a permanent sort of fixture? Maybe the applicant. Is that okay, Peter? Yeah, I, th I go ahead. Please stand up to answer that. Yeah, uh, to the microphone, I will say that we all these signs have dimmer that we approve uh, and they they are able to adjust the brightness down. So it would be an adjustment every day. 
No, it, it would be turned there. down on a permanent basis. And well, I mean, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 Every day. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I have no objection other than I needed that clarification. What are the hours of the store? Do you know by any chance? All right. You're just a sign guy. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, Jim. Uh, I don't really have any comments. Um, you know, I do have, I and mean, we have a master. We've already approved this kind of meets all the criteria. I, I'm almost under the opinion still that I think I mentioned this before that if it meets all the criteria of the master sign, uh, the, the master sign um, design criteria, um, and I almost wonder why it even comes in front of us. I mean, it just seems it's an extra step that uh, maybe we could. I don't know how the other commissioners feel about it, but it seems like it's something that that um, if we've already approved a sign, a master sign design guidelines, I don't know why it needs to come back to us because mm -hmm. it meets all the criteria. It was just that's why I asked you for the the criteria today to see you just kind of read through it. It's pretty in depth. Yeah, generally the um, town center design guidelines have been vetted by the commission. There's been some changes to mm -hmm. it, um, maybe the last seven or so years um, that the commission hasn't approved. So that's kind of with an unapproved master sign program, yeah. essentially. We, we bring them to you because they're facing outside. And that's something that we're working on internally on okay. changing um, changing this for uh, applicants with these sort of more minor signs that they don't require uh, the planning commission. I mean, we have a very fantastic and super competent planning staff, so I'm sure that you guys could handles some of these things if, if it, everything was outlined like this. So anyway, that's, that's just my opinion. The, the rest of the commissioners could could yeah. feel differently, uh, but I can make the findings to approve this sign. For the chair, if there are more comments on that subject, um, and if you're open to it, we can agendize that subject to talk yes. about that more thoroughly, um, you know, and we'll come back and have that discussion because it is something that we've identified as well. Great. Yeah, we would uh, endeavor to talk about that later uh, and see if we do want to agendize that. So, but um, we have had, it's been a few years since we've had public comment on signs. Um, Valerie, anything for you to say about this? No, I'm here with Margaret on the hours though. I just, I guess it was supposed to be a question, but if the uh, um, sign is set to turn off at the close of business, what's the reason for the 11 p.m. guidance? Can we just match the hours? like not to have it later than the closing of the business hours. I mean, there was no reason why the sign should be even on dimmers to me, right? Like if it's facing the residential area, that's all. There's been some history or there is another uh, piece of the code or discussion about 11 p.m. for all signs at town center. Is that right? Oh, something like that. Yeah. Right. Um, I believe it's in our code. I'm looking for the code section. Um. In the past, while she's looking, we have found that some signs uh, have been delinquent and getting turned off at 11. And so we've asked them to turn them off by 11, like store on the other side of the mall. Uh, we we'll leave the sign on overnight sometimes. And we asked that that be shut off at 11. For some reason, the 11 p.m. came in somewhere into this process. I don't recall where, where, where it states at. Sort of a uniform requirement, I think. At town center, I think Monty is here. He, he could speak to that if we asked him to. Well, we well, I can ask you to do that. Um, um, we open it up to public comment again if you want to comment on that, Monty. I for um, or this word, we actually have that notice after the discussion. So now that was really part of um, the town's performance, baked in the business as well. 
Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, right. so it's um, after close of business. It's eleven. It's eleven p.m. It has to shut off. Yeah, it goes dark. All right, um, Daniel. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I I can support the um, resolution as the staff has put forward. Uh, the signs consistent with uh, both the towns and the uh, town centers guidelines. And I think it's also fairly consistent with the other signs that are along that part of the part of the mall. Uh, and so I'm supportive of moving forward with this. All right, thank you. I would be able to make the findings as well. So with that said, um, do we have a motion for this item? Hang on. Um... <laughs> Have at it, Jim. Sure. I'd like to make a motion to approve in the matter of signed permit application PL23-0083 for one new illuminated sign at the Affinity, Xfinity Store at 421 Corte Madera Town Center. Do we have a second for this? Second. second. Okay. We can take a roll call here. Great. Commissioner Kenny? Yes. Commissioner Beshoyer? Aye. Commissioner Bendel? Yes. Vice Chair Rizzo? Aye. And Chair Chase? Aye. Okay. Is there any kind of uh, special notice for this um, application to read? Probably not. I don't believe there is. Ah, okay. Bill Rice. Um, the appeal period extends 10 calendar days from the date of decision, and any decision by the Planning Commission may be appealed uh, within that 10 day time frame. Appeal forms are available to the Planning Department or on our website. Or appeal All right. Thank you. Staff will let you know, as <laughs> they always do. All right. Our second item tonight is uh, 700 Tamalpais Drive. This is a design review application PL22-0078 for the proposed exterior renovation of the existing gasoline, gasoline state service station building, replacement trash enclosure, and landscaping at 700 Tamalpais Drive, and a conditional use permit application 23-0055 for the modification of the interior of the existing building to remove the auto repair and service component in order to accommodate its full use as a mini mart. Uh, this is also uh, Ms. Hagerty's, Ms. Hagerty's presentation. So Tracy, take it away, please. Peter said, this evening, the commission is considering design review for exterior changes to the service station at 700 Tamalpais Drive and a use permit to modify, um, remove the auto repair and service component for the entire building to a mini mark. Um, the project site is 700 Tamalpais Drive is located at the northeast corner of the intersection of Tamil Pius Drive and Madera Boulevard. The site is about 15,000 square feet in area, which is 0.36 acres, and is developed with a 1,546 square foot service station building. The building is comprised of a 1,100 square foot service bay and smog check garage and a 436 square foot. To the south of the, of the service station building, um, is the existing Pump Island canopy. Vehicular access is provided via two driveways off of Tamil Pies Drive and two driveways off of Madera Boulevard. Adjacent to and behind the site is the core Madera Town Center Mall. Uh, it's own C2 regional shopping, as is the, the project site. Across Madera Boulevard to the west is a standalone office building. That's zone professional, uh, O professional and administrative office. And across Tamil Pies, Drive to the south is a group of commercial buildings. Those are zones C1 local shopping. Uh, 
On July 11th, 2023, the Planning Commission conducted a preliminary review of the application. At that time, the applicant was proposing to rebrand the site as a Chevy Chevron, Chevron gasoline service station. And it included the remodel of the exterior, the new trash enclosure, the landscaping and, and the use permit, but it also included modifications to the fuel island canopy and signage, including the standing sign. Attachment two includes a summary of the Planning Commission uh, comments at that meeting, uh, including it, uh, the applicant's responses on each point. The applicant has since revised their project and has elected not to rebrand the site as Chevron. It does include the remodel of the exterior facade, the new trash enclosure, uh, new site landscaping, and use permit for the mini mart. The revised project does not include any changes to the existing canopy, uh, nor does it in include any changes to signage or new signs. If uh, modifications to those signs are uh, um, proposed in the future, it, those modifications would also require design review and and or sign permit. The project that the applicant's proposing is shown in, listed in attachment three, that's a project description and attachment four to your packet is the project plans. This photo shows existing conditions at the project site. I know there's no change uh, to the size of the building or the height of the building. No changes are proposed to the canopy or the fuel pumps. And as I stated before, no, no new signage. The existing building signage reads smog shop and auto repair, and those will be removed. And in addition to the complete remodel of the interior, the applicant proposes to make changes to the exterior to address deferred maintenance and provide a, a higher quality look for the building. Based upon the feedback from the commission at the preliminary review, the applicant revised the colors and materials. Uh, current, the current project uh, proposes that the exterior materials can include this, a cladding or, or a wainscot in stone gray at the lower three feet of each elevation, and we'll paint the building in the southern breeze uh, color. And I'll, I'll show these materials more closely shortly. This is the south elevation facing Tamil Pius Drive, where the applicant proposes to replace the storefront windows and relocate the uh, main point of entry uh, more to the middle of the building. This is the north elevation or the or the rear facing town center. Um, you can see the materials and colors are carried over to the, the rear elevation and obviously the service bay roll-up doors are removed um, and patched. This is the east elevation, the interior side also faces the town center mall. This is the west elevation facing Madera Boulevard. This uh, shows the applicant is proposing to modify the large windows on this elevation and then replace uh, on the, the lower. The opposed elevation shows three, four by approximately four by six windows. With this project, the existing chain link trash enclosure that's shown at the top right of the screen is proposed to be replaced with a new 216 square foot trash enclosure. The maximum height of the trash enclosure is nine feet, six inches. It is the only increase to total floor area of this site. It results in an increase of 1%. The proposed total floor area is 0.11 and allowed is 0.34. The applicant has uh, updated the colors used on the trash enclosure to utilize the same colors that are proposed for the building. This slide shows the proposed color and materials, which are also in front of you on the dais. And I'll, I will let the applicant speak more to what you're looking at um, and what you're holding up there at the appropriate time. At the preliminary review, the applicant proposed a beige color and an antique whitewash brick uh, panel system at the base of the building, the lower three feet, and they based on the feedback from the commission at the preliminary review, they've revised uh, that color and materials. On the right is what's known as tough block in stone gray, which is an exterior architectural panel installed on the building on a track system it, it, acting as a, a wainscot at the lower three feet uh, of the building on each elevation. And on the left is the new exterior paint color uh, known as Southern Breeze. And those chips are on the material board. 
These are some photos of the existing landscape conditions. There are several uh, planters at the project site that are empty at the moment. The applicant proposes to rehabilitate these areas of the site. The landscape plan, if you refer to sheets 5.0A and 5.0B, that shows landscaping is proposed to be installed in the existing planters along the west property boundary. There's a planter at the southwest corner of the site under the sign at the north project boundary and at the southeast corner. They have uh, one Chinese pistache tree in the western planter. Uh, and the two street trees are in poor condition along Tamil Pius Drive and the applicant proposes to re replace those. The uh, applicant made enough modifications to the landscape plan based on some feedback from the commissioners and that modification is to add landscaping at the east, the south, and the west um, edges of the building at the, at the base of the building. Uh, the applicant has also provided thumbnails of the proposed plantings to aid in the commissioner's decision making on this part of the project. And additionally, condition of approval number 11 is a standard condition that requires permanent maintenance of landscaping required with any design review. Staff is able to make design review findings for these changes. Um, and an analysis of those findings is included in the resolution that's attached to your staff report. And moving on to the additional use aspect of this project, the existing service station was built about 70 years ago when gas stations were permitted use in commercial zones. And the application for this project includes a use permit to modify the uses at the interior of the store. The service and smog check areas are 1,100 roughly square feet. Those will be converted to condition space and combined with the existing mini mart and converting the entire building to mini mart use. The applicant has proposed hours of operation for the mini mart. The existing mini mart is open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, and the applicant proposes to extend those hours to four, be open 4 a.m. to 1 a.m. daily. There are two other service stations with mini marts in Corte Madera. The Chevron mini mart was located at 90 Corte Madera Town Center. It is open 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. The other guest service station with Minimart is QuickServe. It's Minimart, uh, it's, it's located at 5, 516 Tamil Pius Drive. It's Minimart is open 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday, Saturday 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. and is closed on, on Sundays. And the QuickServe pumps are self-service and they're operational 24 hours a day seven days a week, even when no employee is on site. Attachment six to your staff report provides the hours of operation of a variety of businesses in Corte Madera. And this slide is showing just those generally in the same vicinity as the project site. And it's worth noting that uh, the earliest that any business is open is, is 5 a.m. and the latest is 11 p.m. Anybody need me to go back? This shows the existing and proposed floor plan. The auto repair and service bays will be removed and the use would discontinue. The whole building would be dedicated to mini mart use, uh, 1,546 square feet in total. It would include the sale of beer and wine. And pursuant to state law, the town cannot preclude the sale of beer and wine, but we could impose conditions of approval um, as necessary in order to make use permit findings. At the preliminary review, the commission raised several concerns with the proposed 24 seven operation and the applicant has subsequently reduced their proposed hours to 4 a.m. to 1 a.m. operation and staff concerns do remain. Project site is situated close to a residential neighborhood. South Madera Gardens is in close proximity Businesses in, in this area, as I showed on the slide before, are not open before 5 a.m. or after 11 p.m. And the sale of beer and wine, especially combined with late night operations, could bring additional noise um, or even trips um, that maybe would not otherwise occur if they didn't have that product uh, offering, for example. Um, and then, therefore, staff is recommending a couple of 
changes um, or conditions of approval rather. Um, number one, to recommend a reduction in operating hours and a limitation on the floor area of the store that could be dedicated to beer and wine product display. Condition of approval number four um, sets forth, uh, in, the, in the draft resolution sets forth operating hours of 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily, instead of what the applicant is proposing. And condition of approval five reads that the total area of the mini mart that may be dedicated to beer and wine sales uh, is a maximum of 150 square feet. The applicant has stated that they anticipate 144 square feet of floor area would be dedicated to beer and wine product display. With these conditions, staff is able to make all conditional use permit findings. Analysis of those findings can be found in your staff report and also in the resolution um, 24002. So staff is recommending the Planning Commission approve the draft resolution. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, the applicant team is here as well in support of their application. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. All right. So um, I'm sure that uh, Valerie has some questions or not. Do you? Not just staff. All good. Oh, good. Okay. Well, wow. not just staff. <laughs> not just staff. All right. Daniel, how about you? Um. Relative to 516 Tam Drive, which has the hours of uh, weekday hours of 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., uh, do we are you aware of the kind of history of those hours, how we got to those, particularly since it is also on Tamapias Drive and we're proposing an hour earlier starting on the same street? So what is the fairness of uh, hours and history there? I'm not aware of um why they have the hours that they do. Um, when I talked with the owner there, I did inquire about what those might be and how, what they do with the pumps, uh, but I'm not aware of any application history or any reason or any involvement of the town really in what those hours are. There may be involvement. I'm not, okay. not aware of what it would be. Uh, and my other question, one other question would be um, the 150 square feet of alcohol sales area um is that a number we've used at other establishments like this not um, at all i rounded up their proposed 144 square feet and that um, computes to you know roughly one percent of the store the point of that condition is to avoid the totality of the store or even half the store from becoming dedicated to alcoholic beverage sales do we think that would be a standard going forward for other mini mart operations um, maybe the percentage of the store versus the the number um, might might make sense. Um, maybe the the applicant may have some sense of you know, what what that looks like across other other stores that they may have put together in different jurisdictions. But um, certainly, I'm just be... thinking about again the equity question. Uh, again, there may be other mini mart proposals, or someone with existing mini mart may want to expand their alcohol sales area, so. The other mini marts don't sell alcohol. There's actually a condition of approval for Chevron that they don't sell alcohol. So they would uh -huh. have to amend their use permit. So I'm not sure why that exists or even if that's legal anymore. It is, okay. Um, so. Uh, and the last question is, uh, do we have uh, standards for street trees? Um, size, species, spacing. We have from the beautification committee in consultation with the town arborist back when we had one and public works created a, a list, not necessarily of these of approved street trees, but um, street trees that are infrastructure friendly and that the town um, would su suggest for people to plant. Uh, they're, don't, they're not in our code. It's, it's not a requirement, but it's a program that was developed by the beautification committee to give away free street trees. And so they wanted to make sure that public works um, and an arborist gave them input on what those should be. Um, and the, the crepe myrtle is one of those, uh, the pistache is actually one. Um, there's, there's several, several others. The street tree program was discontinued as a result of the drought and, and hasn't restarted now that the, the droughts will have relief from the drought, but um, we certainly are sharing that information still um, with people who wish to plant street trees. 
I guess I would uh, I would ask the board, as we did with Jim's question, whether that is something we might want to talk about on a future agenda item uh, relative to a, really an urban design question about what what our public streets look like and what kind of form we want them to have. Um, since what we have is apparently not a requirement or a standard, but a suggested list of trees. Agreed that that could be on an agenda. Um, there has been a lot of discussion in the past about what the trees ought to be. Um, other uh, boards in the town have taken it up, and there was a lot of discussion at town council a few years ago about the kinds of trees that were permitted. So the fire department has weighed in on it. Uh, Public Works has weighed in on it, and they came up with those list of trees. Um, but your point about that could be a, another item for another discussion. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's it, Peter. Um, just to, ad I, I know a number of years ago, the uh, Quick Serve uh, reduced its hours. Uh, um, and I remember talking to the owner about it, and he just said, I don't have the business to stay open late. So he reduced it, and I was surprised because um, you couldn't stop there on the way home. Uh, and get something at a late hour. So Colonial Liquors is open, but it's kind of a desert. Anyway, that's my thought commentary on it. Mr. Uh, Rizzo. I just wanted to confirm that the applicant owns the, prop, the, the land underneath the building. Is it owned by one person? Yes. It's, yes. Um... It's not so, owned. Are you asking if the land, there's a separate owner for the building? Correct. Not really. It's not somebody it's leasing the leasing the building. And owner right. will operate. Okay. Yes. And he owns the, the building and the, the land under. Okay. Yes. That's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Margaret, do you have any questions for staff? Uh, I I did. And uh, both the questions are on, have to do with the report on page eight of the uh Okay. So, um, on the third sentence down, <laughs> how did the uh, town, how did the staff feel that this uh, business mutually benefited other uses in the zone? I'm looking for the sentence, sorry. That was one of the... The sentence that says the third sentence. project site is on C2 regional shopping, allows and encourages a variety of permitted and conditionally permitted commercial uses, especially uses that are local or regional serving, to strengthen the local economy and that can mutually benefit other uses in the zone. The question is, how does this project mutually How did benefit? the staff feel that this benefits other uses? Um, zone? Well, it, it provides a higher higher quality um look to the building um it offers a a different product offering with the sale of of goods food beverages and the like that um is a more similar product offering that you have at nearby businesses such as Rite Aid Safeway even the coffee shops and food establishments at town center um then and maybe it's more compatible with those types of product offerings that you find in the vicinity than the auto repair type of use is. So deleting the incompatibility really is how it's benefiting the nearby uses um, in, in any direction. Okay. And and so then further down, uh, it, you talk about residential development and how it contributed, contributes positively to the community's image. So how did you come to that? The site, in, when you look at the photo of existing conditions, is has a lot of deferred maintenance. Um, and being next to, whether it's a commercial property or a residential property that has a lot of deferred maintenance, um, can become quite obvious. Where there's peeling paint on the eaves or a lot of vehicles that are stored on site, and we've conditioned those to be removed in a timely manner. Um, that improving one's property um, helps those in the vicinity. Um, whether it's residential or commercial. So it sounds like in, in both cases, it's just uh, picking up the deferred you, uh, the deferred maintenance that needs to be done um, and improving that. Is that 
what the staff feels is the biggest contributor of this business. What uh, are you asking about? I'm just I'm just wondering your your you've laid out here and said that it's contributing to the neighborhood basically. And I'm I'm wondering it sounds like in your priority of of doing of saying that that you think it should be approved that the deferred maintenance is the biggest priority. Not necessarily I'm just using those words to kind of describe um, how the site uh, needs a remodel. It's being completely remodeled on the interior as well, which isn't really part of the scope of a design review. So that's why I'm focusing on the exterior changes, but to completely remodel the inside and the outside really of a building, um, uh, that does contribute positively um, to the the image of the property itself and the uh, within the context of that particular area. It's a highly visible site um, and uh, improving its condition is a positive is a positive thing. So okay, and and a further question is um, by eliminating the uh, repair aspect of the property. Do you know what other um, businesses in Corte Madera do repair or that kind of repair? Um, there's D and K Auto um, does auto repair, and then we have um, that's in in just. As you turn the corner, yeah, at old, old town by Mickey Lark, Park, uh, Larkspur, yeah, yeah, by Mickey Park. Um, there's a uh, what recently there's some car dealerships that really they only do repair on those particular vehicles. Tesla has a service bay, a very large service bay. Um, there's a Ferrari service bay on the east side, um, kind of across from Amy's. Um, well, this this one I know does smog checkups. Do you know any other place that does smogs? Um, in if we're including Larkspur, there's a two smog check stations. Yeah, I know by Trader Joe's, but just in Corte Madera, this is I'm the only of. one yeah. in Corte Madera. Okay, that's all. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was going to say the change of the use of the building is a getting rid of the cars, all of that storage that's there now constitutes a significant change to, of use to that site. And you mentioned that here. Okay. So with that said, uh, we're going to let the applicant make their presentation to us. So who will do that and start out? I don't know. There you go. Good evening. Uh, my name is Julio Tinejero from Milestone Associates. We're the design firm for the project. Um, Happy New Year. <laughs> we're glad to be back. Um, we we went ahead and um, took all the comments from our last meeting, um, trying to implement as much as possible, um, colors, materials, contemporary look. It's just really a really nice look. Um, one thing I wanted to clarify before we get too far was that little sample I gave you guys. Um, the finish is not the wood grain. Um, the company sent me the wood grain rather than a slate. It's most like it's supposed to be more like a slate tile look. <laughs> Uh, smoother than the wood grain. So I uh, apologize for that, but um, the, the material itself is going to be the same material. It's just a different finish. So that's a very um, durable product. It uh, has great uh, longevity and wears very well over time. It's been used on multiple nationwide uh, uh, restaurant chains and uh, commercial properties. So just to interrupt, and uh, when it says on the sample board, uh, Nichiha, Nichiha. Um, tough block. This is called rough sawn wood series. Right, exactly. So that's the difference. Yeah, the difference is the material is the same, but the finish is um, the one we sh we're going to propose is the block, which is a slate, mm -hmm. kind of like a slate tile look, smoother, more of a contemporary look than the wood look. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> as you guys know, the um, <clears throat> the client or the, excuse me, the, the applicant who is the owner operator of this location is been wanting to get this open since last summer, and uh, we've we we we've been going back and forth with the branding, as you guys know, and we try to make that work, but they are still trying to figure it out. So we just said, you know what, let's his uh, we've got the community that's excited about this. You know, people come in, they want to have more options. The little part that we have now it's a very small little convenient center 
or convenience store. So we know that this is going to definitely be a benefit to you know the customers who come in the, to that uh, location. So instead of delaying and delaying and delaying, we said, let's just go ahead and beautify the building now. Let's make it look nice, make the whole site, add new landscape, you make it look good, and not worry so much about the branding at this time as far as signage and all that. Because uh, as you guys probably saw, I know Tracy and I, we, staff, we went back and forth with Chevron when they wanted certain canopy. You guys wanted a certain canopy. It just went back and forth. So bringing up basically um, shelf that and figure that out later. But right now, this project is designed so that we can do something now that's going to look good for the location. It's going to be a, definitely a benefit for our customers and give just those choices or that currently they don't have as much, you know, compare a 400 square foot to an 1100 square foot convenience store. There's going to be a lot more choices, opportunities for uh, different types of products, goods and services. So, and then also on the service bay part, just, I think it was brought up about um, the service, the new owner and the applicant, he runs, you know, gas stations and convenience stores. So as part of his business plan, that part just doesn't fit into the business plan as far as the automotive. So it wasn't like he's trying to get rid of that because it just not doesn't fit within this business plan, and that's not part of his uh, business structure. But um, the convenience store obviously is are hand in hand with any gas station that you go to. Um, we'll have those opportunities for uh, customers to be able to buy those. So um, as far as the conditions, um, as far as the hours, uh, the applicants uh, acceptable to that. Um, the square footage of um, beer and wine. That's fine as well. As you know, we're, we're also governed by ABC, which has a lot of restrictions and conditions that he'll have to meet as well. But um, we're okay with that. And then, um, yeah, just again to wrap up that it is going to be an owner operator. So he is the one that's actually going to not only invest the money to make this work and look very nice, but he's also going to be operating the, the business. So anyways, uh, with that, is there's any questions? I could answer. Well, good to hear. So um, we'll see if there are any questions for you directly to you. Um, we can start over here with Daniel and see if you have any questions, mm -hmm. Valerie, for this gentleman. Are you planning to include any door operators in the front door? Door operators? Mm -hmm. Like uh, like automatic door operator. Um, probably... Right now, it's not proposed to do that. They're just a standard. I mean, I don't know if the client wants to invest in that, but currently they're going to be, they will have closers as required by code, but they're not going to be automatic. And then the other question is, if there is a reasoning why you are not matching staff recommendations for the hours of operations, what, um, what kind of guides you to have the hours 4 a.m. to well, we we're in agreement to go, and unless you, I think it was five to eleven, right? Is that what was agreed on? Right. So originally we proposed the four to okay. one because on other locations and based on his experience, he he feels that he could justify that business. But we also recognize the, the community and the hours around us, and so um, the pumps will be twenty four, just like the other gas stations, twenty four seven. So fueling will be available, but. Um, the 5 to 11 p.m. is acceptable. Okay, I don't have any more questions. Right. Have Thank you. Uh, Margaret, do you have any questions for this gentleman? Um, I do. My questions are about this letter that was uh, dated December 7th. Is this the appropriate time to ask questions about that letter from Milestone Associates? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm kind of just wondering, you said the proposed project is approved under the existing conditional use permit. Is that something that's been approved that we don't know about? Well, the gas station was approved, as mentioned on staff, was approved originally, and that had a use. Oh, you're talking about the original. The original. Okay. Um and you talked about uh, the capability to provide students and young adults with meaningful employment and personal growth. 
Could you talk about that further? Yeah, he's uh, this applicant and owner has multiple locations, and he is he's always focused to have impact in his community. So it's gonna he's not gonna be the only guy they're running it. He can actually hire staff, and he'll have multiple shifts of employees. And a lot of times, employees obviously you have to be over twenty one to be able to work in the liquor store or the the convenience store. But that's what we're trying to get is be able to have an opportunity for. Uh, younger um, employees that you know, are qualified for for that position. And how does he encourage that? Um, I, well, on this when we done in the past, he'll do uh, outreach. He'll talk to schools. He'll talk to programs. He'll work with the community. So there, his, he can speak to that. But basically, um, I know by fact on other locations and other jurisdictions we go out and we actually do talk to the communities. And so I think it was brought up last meeting that to do an outreach to the local like um, community groups, if there was any. And so that's what he's going to do by either signage or talking to them to say, Hey, this is available, but we want to be part of the community and also supporting um, fundraisers or something like that for the local, another school, other places does high school, fundraisers or something to help out just to have some kind of impact locally instead of a corporate store that comes in that doesn't really have a a local um, incentive he does uh and then you talked about um the proposed uh, the proposed project is taken in the town's architectural character could you talk about that further? yeah so right if you look at that old the existing building it's again so it was built 50 years ago or 70 years ago, um, we're coming up with a contemporary look as far as the finishes, the colors. Um, we're trying to keep the the same architecture as far as the gable roofs, the canopy. We're kind of leaving that the same, but we're going to update the look. So it's going to look really nice. I mean, the, the renderings don't really make it that much justice. And I think even the print is kind of off a little bit as far as the color. That's why we have the color chips. But the actual finished product is going to be a modern look to that whole building. Do you that. have available a better rendering in the that case? The challenge is that we print them on the computer and generate them, but when we print them, uh, the prints always have, they don't give you the same color. That's the reason why we have the color chips. So the actual color chips would be exactly what it's going to look like on the, on the material. The, yeah, the problem is this is right at the entrance of of Madeira. This is this is what people see yes. to begin with. And so a rendering like this doesn't if you're telling me that this is supposed to well reflect the character of Court of Madeira, I'm not really getting it. Okay. So if you look at that print and then if you look at the color board, you'll see there's definitely a difference in the print and it's actually the same color, but the print job, the print shop does not have the capability to print the exact color. That's why we provided the color chips. But um, the colors, yeah, um, it's it's definitely going to be an improvement. I mean, people driving by are going to be like, wow, this is a really nice building because it's going to, what you have now is just outdated. It's old, it's weathered, it's worn. You know, this is going to be new, fresh look for that location. And the new landscaping, Getting rid of the cars, all that, just definitely going to be a big improvement to what it is now. I think people will be happy to come to it. And on this, on this building, yes. is there going to be a sign that says Mini Mart or something like that? There'll be a sign on there that's going to say, uh, I don't know if it says Food Mart or so, not. It's going to have a sign, but that's we're not asking for the signage at this time. So the signage is, you know, what you're going to need. Yeah, so. It'll be as as Tracy said. It'll be a separate application. Yeah, it's under a separate application. It, um, it won't be applied for at this time. Right. Um, so I'm just going to help you out here. Um, the The building now is an existing shell, and you're going to leave that shell basically and redo the exterior. Well, of that, it. right now we're looking at. Um, we have to look at seismic. Obviously, you know we've done these in the past, converting these old buildings and putting a facade on them, mm -hmm. but. Sometimes, you know, once we get into do our spectral or structural analysis, there is times when we have to, you know, it might be dry rotted or it might be rusted. So, but our intention 
is to go ahead and do a facade renovation to that existing structure and keep the look as it looks now. Now, if we have to tear out a panel and put a wall, you're not going to know, you know, but it's, it's going to look the same, but it might be structurally um, have to be retrofitted if required. Right. But the guiding principle of your effort is to keep that shape and that basic glass and painted exterior. Right. Uh, so be, exactly. It'll, yeah. It'll be contemporized and it'll look like a new building in that shape. So if that's a new building in that shape, I think Margaret's a, how will that reflect the community architectural standards, right? So if you can answer that to how that design speaks to fitting into the community in some way, that might help. So like anything, there's it's all, you know, a business plan and investment. The, the applicant's going to invest, you know, a million dollars or a million you know, on this remodel. So we have to also look at the economics of it. I mean, we'd love to tear it down and build this great model building for you guys, but it all comes down to business as well. So we're looking at initially doing a facade renovation of the existing structure, try to keep as much of it as possible, but still you saw we closed some of the windows, we got rid of the roll-up doors, we got rid of even some of the storefronts to kind of make it a new building. But in essence, the, the skeleton or the shell of it is still the original building. Economically, we have to do that now. But again, if it comes out that it, we can't do it, right. then we could have a little bit more flex flexibility. But at this That would time, be a different application to change the architecture. Yes. You've got an architectural model there. You're following that. You're improving the shell. It's becoming contemporized but that's it and it's driven by economics is what you're saying so correct yeah okay that would be a different project right. okay thank you for that answer peter <laughs> we drive down that road a little bit okay mr rizzo all right julio um first thing so this this uh, property is under new ownership yes and and does the owner live locally? I believe. Uh, I live in Brentwood. Brentwood, right? Brentwood, so you're in LA. Brentwood, no, no, no. Brentwood. Here uh, by Antioch. Oh, okay, great. And you have a, uh, there's a few properties uh, in in the business now. Um, are there any branding aspects to the materials that we're using on this that are being requested in some of the other remodels that? The ownership group is doing like is there any branding aspects to the material are all the projects different they're all different this one is not a like let's say corporate mm -hmm. um design that somebody can come in and we didn't take like chevron or arco we designed it based on um kind of like keeping the same look for 76 let's say mm -hmm. i mean it's the color and the finish but we wanted to make sure that um um it's not a specific corporate color. So in other words, it's a unique design for this location and for this community. So we're not using that combination anywhere mm -hmm. else. Okay. And um, is is the horizontal band required because of expansion or is that just a design element? The horizontal band, which one? The lower part of this material uh, going around the bottom of the band. Oh, no, no, that I'm talking about in, in the stucco. Oh, that stucco. That, is that it private or is it, I mean, what kind of stucco? It's, it's a... Uh, um, it's just a control joint. So it's a little reveal that does, we usually do it to break up the stucco so it doesn't crack, but it also gives you an architectural look, an architectural element. Since the bottom has a score line to it, mm -hmm. to finish, the top it has a score just to kind of complement that design. So it's required? No, it's not required. Yeah. It's not required. Oh, just, okay. And um, so... Why is the roof not being replaced as part of this proposal? It seems like it's done. Is it going to be split up into a separate permit? Um, the roof is, um, you know, it's going to be event replaced eventually when it's deemed, you know, not feasible or not, you know, not doing its job or whatever the term is. Uh -huh. I mean, it will be eventually replaced like anybody's roof, but as part of this, our inspections show that it was still had a life. It still has a wearable life right now. So it's not proposed to be replaced again, back to economics that we're trying to mm -hmm. 
But, you know, we can see down the road when that gets weared out and we have to replace the or he needs to replace the roof. Yeah. We'll definitely have an opportunity there. And I, I did notice there was some rust in, in the gutters and the eaves and all that. Is, is that something that's going to be repaired with okay. the facade? Okay. Um, the last one looked like a brand new building. Yeah. I mean, it's going to. Are, are you going to do a slurry coat on, on, on the asphalt at least? It, I mean, it's pretty beat up. Um, that wasn't part of when we ended up just going to the facade renovation. Um, we decided to, again, minimize the scope yeah. of cost and then just do the building and the landscaping. Now, I don't know if the owner, you know, you'll probably want to be do that, I guess, but I don't think it's part of the scope. But it's again, if it comes out to dollars and cents and you can do it, you probably will do it, right? Because he wants to beautify it. But... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to look at it as a composition because you got the roof that probably needs to be replaced. I mean, I don't know. I'm looking at it going, it kind of looks at its end of its life, even though it's holding water. But um, anyway, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Um, question for you guys. So the 76 ball is going to remain. The 76 pumps are going to remain. And there used to be a 76 banner on the building. That's gone. And so it's just going to stay 76 until the building gets remodeled and you do some business investigation, decide what you want to do. Right. But as a part of this application, that stays. Yes. And so forth. Okay. And no other incremental branding will occur to this project until you figure out your business model and all that. Right. So, okay. All right. Um, I think that's all I had to ask. So I think that the, uh, there will be a building permit with this. Right. And that's a, that covers other things like automatic doors or various things that will occur. Um, the uh, same story with the lights that uh, apply to other projects. This will have to shut down at 11 for lights on the building or inside the building. Right, inside the building. Yeah. yeah. Can I just real quick, you just brought up something sure. that reminded me. We have had had projects in the past where when it goes to building department, the inspector goes out and says, hey, you know, or the mech put a condition like, hey, you, replace broken sidewalks, you know, broken, broken yeah. curb and gutter. That's something that is kind of like could be done, but it's, it's not really a condition, but it's kind of like a comment from building might go out there and say, Hey, can you guys replace this or something? So it's not a part of this application, but it would be a part of building department review right. and public works review uh, to look at those elements of the site and make sure that they're up to snuff. Correct. Right. Okay. All right. Anybody else from the applicant wish to make a uh, statement or a presentation? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So at this point, we can open this to public comment for anybody in the room who wants to stand up and make a three-minute presentation, or we see who's online and wants to make a statement. I don't see any raised hands online. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll call it then. Oh, you want to make a public comment? Yeah, yeah okay. Um, please stand up. You got three minutes. This on, yeah. I'll make this quick. Um, I'm your closest neighbor. I live uh, right next to the real estate office that's uh, right across the street on um, Madeira. Um, and at first, I was worried about the hours. Um, you know, the hours uh, uh Closing at, at 1 a.m., opening at 4 a.m. would leave about three hours in the middle for which to restock and and resupply all the shelves, and it would be quite uh, loud. But um, it seems like you're willing to, you know, amend the hours. Um, worried about the noise since I'm I'm right 60 feet I you know 60 feet away from this uh, mini mart that's going in. Um, the noise and the lighting. Um, you, by cutting back the the hours, it seems like the noise may be mitigated somewhat. Um, but the lighting, I, you know, I think I guess you'll apply for another permit uh, for the lighting later. And this is just a this is just to get the ball rolling, just to get the permit going, and then the amendments and changes come 
after that as i'm a contractor i kind of know how that how that ball rolls um but uh i would be concerned about the lighting um and there there appear to be two light poles now which are probably insufficient lighting for the this kind of an operation and uh well, I, I guess when it comes up for a design review later, I will get a notice and I'll look at the lighting, the lighting plan, and see what that has. Um, so was I. Five a.m. to eleven. That's later than it is now. Um, I'm a little concerned about the noise. Um, the noise and the lighting, but um, it's other than that, uh, that's about all I have. Thank you. Mark, you're to the west, Mark, uh, across Tamil Vista. I'm right across the street from the gas station, uh, to the west. To the west, okay. Yeah, directly west. I'm on the corner. I'm to yeah. Mohawk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I stare at the light, the '76 ball. I have blackout shades on my windows. For that reason, mm -hmm. um, uh, the lights are, I can only imagine they're going to get more as this station turns into a, uh, you know, whatever its next iteration is going to be with Chevron or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I stare at it. Okay. Um, just out of curiosity, there's a, there used to be that, or is there a big air compressor out there? um that ran at times i don't know if anybody if that ever bothered run at night they were pretty quiet after nine ten yeah. but it was an interesting operation they had going there in the back the mechanics and i've taken my car over there on occasion not all um uh i wasn't aware that the chevron down there uh the one mile or whatever it's called across from the motel that doesn't sell beer and wine or does it no, it does not. It's not. It doesn't. It does not. Well, that's great. We got there's colonial liquors and we got Safeway. And if you close at eleven, Safeway closes at eleven. So, you know, it won't be a magnet for late night beer buys. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Mark, did you was there one light in particular that uh you wanted to mention? You wanted shielded and well I'd do you like, have any comments it, on the it's existing not the light? One that exists now because that's all gonna change. All of it's going to change. I've been living for years with the ones that are there. Okay. But once they um, put in a revision, the next the revision that they're going to do after this one to do more work, um, the lighting plan, the new lighting plan will be in that. And then we'll, we'll have a meeting then and I'll talk about maybe shielding those lights from, you know, blasting into the bedroom windows. We'll talk at a later date. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. So uh, with that said, sounds like we can close public comment. Is that fair to say, Tracy? Checking. Uh, Chair Chase, no hands are, are raised online. Okay. I don't know. Uh, the western side of the station now has had uh, broken windows for a while, um, boarded up, um, and uh, the new western elevation has fewer windows than exist now. So um, there is some improvement there on that glare of glass and so forth. Uh, but improvement on that side. Okay. All right. So let's uh, take it up here and let's talk about this. Um, uh, Daniel, I'm going to start with you over there. Um, your feelings and uh, your thoughts about these two uh, components. We have a single resolution with these two items in it, the uh, application design review and the conditional use permit. So they're grouped together in one resolution from us. Um, go ahead. Okay. I assume though that the comments could apply to either one of those, either the conditional use permit or the design review. I mean, you're not segregating those, are you? No. Okay. No. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess 
I think I'd like to see the opening hour 6 a.m., not 5 a.m. And um, uh, I don't th I think that comps of Starbucks and Bay Club are, are comps because the Bay Club is totally faces parking lot and commercial properties. The Starbucks is interior town center. So again, that noise or operation or whatever is not going to disturb anybody. Um, and it would be consistent with um, uh, Quickie Serve Station, uh, also on Tamapias, which starts at 6 a.m. So that's one change I'd like to see. Uh, the other one, uh, first of all, I'd like to compliment you on the landscape plan. Uh, and, and I think, you know, a really good response to, to the comments we had last time. Um, the one uh, change I'd like to see uh, are the two crepe myrtles on Tamapias, which are actually on town property, not on your property. And again, I don't know if you're obligated to do that, but if you're not, thank you for thinking about it. Um, but I'd really like to see, rather than crepe myrtles, I'd really rather see uh, what's more considered a street tree, canopy tree. If you look down Tamapias, there's the maples. Uh, and if you look at the trees that are just to the east of you on town center property, they're not maples, and I'm not sure what species they are, but again, they're more of a street tree. And and I think if it, you know, if it's a street tree, you can you can limit up so you still have over time full view of the station and everything in the quickie mart. Um, so that's what I'd like to see. Okay. Um, we'll talk about that. Uh, I'd say other than that, I, I can support this application. Okay. Thank you. Valerie. Yeah. Um, I'm here with Dan. Same thing. I would like to see the start of the hours at 6 a.m. and closing at 9 p.m. Sim similar to Quick. The logic there is because Quick is somewhat in the residential area as well, whereas the uh, other Chevron is very secluded, not facing any houses. So to me, it's, um, you know, like it would be an equal uh, treatment if your hours would be similar to the quick serve station, just because of the location and the way it faces. So I would like to see the change for the hours from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. or to 9 p.m., I'm sorry. Um, my other comment is on the material board. I do agree with Margaret's concern based on her questions is that um, the material board is not really fitting the style of the town center right now, whereas town center has a little bit of a warmer palette. Um, to be honest, I don't really mind wood grain as much. I understand it's a like, preference and I, you know, no comments of... Uh, like I wouldn't decline the application because of there is no wood grain, but I would suggest to uh, somewhat revise the material palette so that it fits a little bit uh, to the town center and feels a little bit more like a town center um, with some warmer colors. And I understand your modernization approach. I think it's great um, considering that you are not really tearing down the building and changing things, but I feel like even with color, just warming up things, uh, you can achieve the results in a greater way. And so it feels like one part of one community. And then the third aspect on the community. So um, I understand we're not talking much about the interior of the space, but since we are talking about the community and integration with the neighbors, I would like to see the more inclusive design than what you are showing. I understand you provided Minimum code requirements on the interior stuff, but I, you know, that's why I asked about the door operators, right? The wheelchair, um, the disabled people will not be able to enter the store easily. Um, you do have obviously the ADA stall, but you know, that's not enough. Like you're turning radiuses at the corners of the merchandise area and not inclusive uh, to the wheelchair. I would like to see the minimum uh, of 44 inches between the aisles and turning radius is five feet diameter. Just even uh, you, you have to maybe two locations where the wheelchair can pass, but once you get to those refrigerators, um, it's limited. Um, so considering that, you know, you are becoming part of the Puerto Madera community 
I feel like new designs must be inclusive to our neighbors, to people that are around here. Uh, so that's, to me, it's extremely important. And I would love to see some of it um, on the plan. And again, I know this is not something that we're commenting on today, but since you proposed and you showed the dimensions, um, there should be some development in that as well. Um, I know I commented on last time and I really appreciate for you moving the taller ATM equipment off the windows. Um, so I do see that you have like lower equipment there, um, which is fine. But um, the, and again, I would like to agree with Dan, I compliment you for the landscaping plans. Um, I do want to raise Mark's concern since he is a neighbor in regards to the lighting. So be um, I, I feel like what Dan has suggested about the street trees uh, would help to mitigate some of the lighting, potential lighting that will come into the building um, around and kind of close it off a little bit, still recognizable as a station, but, uh, you know, help neighbors not to have that visibility. Um, they will know that the station is there. They don't really need to see it through their windows. Um, so that's that's my comments. Okay. Um, thank you, Valerie. I was just looking at the plan, you know, the existing light poles remain. Um, so um, we'll come back and talk about that, but thank you uh, uh, about some of this. And I'll try to summarize and we'll go through it after everybody's contributed a little bit. Um, so over to you, Margaret, um, for your commentary here, so. Um. Well, I'll first compliment the landscaping. Any improvement to the landscape plan with consideration to the uh, visibility from the street and turning that corner uh, needs to be really carefully looked at, especially how leafy the trees get in the summer because I turn that corner a lot and we really do need good visibility there. But... Um, I'm really disappointed in this building. I had high hopes for something really creative and different and reflective of the town center, which has done a lot of work to become a really a huge community gathering place. And the opportunity was there because this is at the entrance of our town. It's within walking distance of the town park where all the town gathers in the summer for sure. Um, the town center is totally vibrant and active almost every single day of the week. There's um, even a farmer's market there. And, and I had hoped to see something a lot with a lot more imagination than what what's here. It's it's really a disappointment to me because I had high hopes for that site. Um, any upgrade and improvement is terrific. I think that's grand. But to me, this is just an in and out mini mart. People get off the highway, do what they need, and get back on the highway and go there wherever. Um, I think the hours actually uh, 6 a.m. would be the earliest, and I was even going to suggest 9 p.m. because I don't think this should be a place where people go in and decide they're going to buy a six-pack and and get back on the highway. Um, and the, the access of on and off the highway is a lot easier than almost every other place. And so the temptation is there just to get your six-pack and get back on the highway. I, I really uh, don't like that idea at all. Plus, it's uh, it just doesn't say what Corte Madera is all about. It just it just doesn't say Corte Madera is unique, and um, and this was a lost opportunity. I think I I am concerned also about the security in in the place because it is on and off the highway, and so I would hope that not only security cameras were uh, put in place and constantly working, but 
that you invested some money in some some really upgraded security systems, which I I think would probably uh, be of benefit to the community. Um, I do. I would just like to see. I just don't think the design works for Corte Madera. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Rizzo. Well, I, I can agree with the, all the commissioners uh, regarding how prominent this location is. Um, it's definitely a site that greets the community into um, where we live. Um, and um, you know, I'm a little concerned with the project being broken up into different phases um, because I think we might lose some cohesiveness with the overall design, the comprehensive design, and what the final outcome is going to be. Um, we're not looking at you know what roofs going on with what colors of the, of the facade. And there's there's parts of the building that are in disrepair that kind of need to be taken care of. Um, I'd love to see that the design have more of a, of a vernacular style to our what we see in town center in Corte Madera, but uh, that's a whole different conversation. Um, I'm I'm kind of leaning towards if Safeway's open till 11, um, I, you know, it, people could drive to Safeway and pick up their beer just as easily, I think. Um, most of the other businesses that are open, um, Prior to 6, 6 a.m. Are, are gyms and coffee shops predominantly, um, not necessarily uh, anybody selling goods. So I, I could totally support a 6, 6 a.m. to 11 type of scenario just based on uh, the other businesses that are selling some of their products in the area. Um, one thing that hasn't been discussed is, is actually deliveries of the products. Um, I lived across from Tam Paints for years. And those delivery trucks would come at 5 a.m. in the morning with those big diesel motors. And so I don't know if we could put a condition in there or a restriction on the deliveries of the products, because I think that might help out uh, Mark's uh, concerns and impact to, to the noise, because that was uh, I was in the same position 60 feet from the deliveries, and that's what you'd hear at 5 a.m., the big diesel motors. And uh, a lot of times when the deliveries, they use the diesel motors to start cranking up the hydraulics. It gets even noisier. Um, so I don't really know, because uh, you're putting a business plan together, if, if there's a way to have to get those deliveries, uh, you know, during business hours or even a little bit into the morning. But um, that would be great if we could kind of talk talk about that as a commission, because we did, I think we did um, put a condition on uh, total wine on deliveries for the same reason. Correct. Um, and and uh, I'm full support of Tracy's suggestion uh, with limiting to 150 square feet of beer and wine. I, I think that that's plenty uh, for the size of the store um, for both the, the owner to make some money and, and for, for there be enough offerings of other products to be sold in the store. It's not that big of a space. And I, I totally like uh, the idea of a, a larger tree on that west side. I think that would help out with the light a lot, especially with glare through those west windows. Once those are open up, Peter, like you mentioned, they're they're all boarded up right now. Um, I I kind of don't like the reveal. I'm not here to actually. Yeah, you know, I can't design your building up here, but uh, I think maybe removing that reveal would would help it make, make it to me feel like less commercially trying to be contemporary and more um i just like i wouldn't break that up in my opinion around the building but that's up to the architect on that one but other other than that like i said 6 a.m to 11 p.m 150 square feet of beer and wine support daniel's uh, request for the tree Okay, thank you. Um, I uh, am in agreement with you about the hours that I think two eleven is appropriate. Um, I, I think you know when Pete's opens at five thirty, um, 
And I've often used them at that time, um, by 30 for what they offer from fast food at this mini market would be appropriate. Um, and I think to 11 is fair. I think that the, they need an opportunity to make a business out of this. And part of what we do in the town is provide some opportunities for business. So I would also, I would agree with you about the six to 11. Um, I think that I appreciate the idea from Margaret that this is a missed opportunity for architectural improvement, but it is a an improvement of an existing building. I think it's an enhancement of that building. Um, we can't tell people to tear their building out and redesign it and redo it. Um, we can say this is okay what you're doing or not. Um, even though we're not here to design it, as Jim says, we could get involved more like more glazing or more solid surface. But I think what they proposed is a huge improvement. People ask me, what is that building now when they drive by it? Is that a gas? What is that? Well, yeah, it is a gas station and it's just in poor shape. Um, I think this would be a, an improvement. Does it match town center? Nah, not really. Um, could it be done differently? I think that would require a significant alteration of the building to really enhance it to another level. That's economics. I, I, I appreciate that. I don't know where else to drive it with that issue. Um, I think that um, uh, when it comes to the street trees, um, I wish we had at our fingertips that list of trees that was put out a number of years ago that talked about the disallowed trees and the trees that are allowed. It was it was broken down to about four trees that they would allow to be planted in the city right away. And I forget what they are. But if Dr. Bundy were here, he would <laughs> anyway go in on this because he's very familiar with it. And there were some trees that the beautification committee weighed in heavily on. And I don't recall the crepe myrtle being uh, uh, a problem, but there were some real problem trees and people got argumentative about it. Um, but the town held firm. So part of it was fire marshal and getting to some trees that were okay. And part of it was the sidewalk disturbance. Um, and out of that came three or four trees that were acceptable. I just don't recall what they were. So there was a list that was generated at one time. Um, I, I agree with Margaret. Security is a concern. That's up to the applicant to address. We can't really say you got to do that, but I think it's a worthy of expression, as are a lot of the things that you guys bring up. They're worthy of expression and saying it. Um, and asking them to address this and be aware of it. Some of this stuff, we have to decide if we're going to have them bring it back or if we can ask staff to review, for instance, the trees. Can we let staff address the tree issue or do we need to bring it back to us? Um, do we want to bring the pallet back to us? Um, or do we just say it has to be warmer? Or, and let them resolve it with staff. Um, so there are a couple of possibilities here. We are faced with the choice of um, having them bring it back or approving it with some conditions tonight. So, um, or not approving it, if we look at this, if we take a vote. So, um, we, we can do this with delivery conditions. We can do it with um pre conditions we can do it with um, changes to material but let's let's talk about a couple of things here one um are you guys open to creating some conditions for this approval or do you want staff to handle the tree or, or can will you let staff handle the trees go for it You're not in the business of being uh, arborous, so to speak, right? But there was a list of trees that is generated for this purpose. Yeah, I guess, uh, as it was mentioned, someone thought Crate Myrtle was on that list, but I wouldn't, I would not consider that a canopy street tree. Mm -hmm. uh, the form of the tree, the openness of the tree, 
the way it grows is not, it's not like the maples down on Tamapias or the trees that have been planted to just to the east on town center property, which will be create, you know, it'll create this kind of that lay of trees going down on Tamapias. Crepe myrtles won't do that. So I don't know what else is on the list. I mean, that's the challenge here. Um, the landscape architect stated that they are open to a specific species. If you want to add a condition, I'm not sure if Monty knows what the species of tree is along town center, but um, we could certainly find out what that is and you could condition it to be that specific tree. I guess I would say if the staff feels comfortable that they understand what I'm talking about, then I'm content with them making that judgment. Right. Um, there was a list of trees um, for the village that went in, right? And I forget what those are. There was a significant number of trees replaced at the village and along Paradise Drive over there uh, on the along the uh, east side of Paradise. They've all been the town put those in. I don't know what those are. You guys know what ones I'm talking about? I know, I know that they put new trees in. I yeah. don't know what they are. Know the species. Yeah. Uh, we reviewed the ones for the village. I don't remember what they are. Um, okay, so that's one possibility. Um, the hours, uh, Jim and I are in agreement that they ought to be longer hours, given them, giving the man a business opportunity. We have three commissioners here that want to limit it to 9 p.m. No, no. Uh, no. I, I just wanted to change the opening from 5 to 6. Okay. I'm fine with 11. Okay. I could jump in and just add that um, any business in Corte Madera can be can be open between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. without a use permit. Now, given that this application requires a use permit for other reasons, um, Anne can correct me if I'm wrong, but it would be within your purview to um, change those hours. But if they didn't require a use permit for the Minimart use, um, uh, they could be open till 11. 6 a.m. to 11 is mm -hmm. by right okay. in Corte Madera. Right. So that would be consistent. All right. All right. So we would s agree with staff's recommendation with three commissioners saying 11, 6 to 11 would be okay. Okay. Margaret might have objected mm. to that. Right. <laughs> so, um, then we're talking about um, essentially design. So we've got uh, colors, we've got design options for this thing. I think they are limited by the construction of that building somewhat, what they can put on it, what they can do to it. I, this would be a, uh, a sort of a rejection of this concept of reusing as much of the building, using the glazing format, creating a wainscot down below of this material um this stuff you know um so it's a bigger discussion uh warmer palette different materials different look um i think that it's a commercial building that's why it has a glazing system with thin mullions all that kind of stuff i think that's what is inherent to such a building at this mm -hmm. location um i don't know what you i think of margaret or you just uh, might have some um reference for it in your mind other than to say you want it to be a little more enhanced or welcoming or warmer or what would you say well first as far as welcoming goes i agree with valerie as far as the uh, doorways go the ada doorways and it should um i think that would allow uh that would be an improvement that could be made uh, that would make it more open for use uh, for other people. And, you know, I'm not going to redesign it either, but I think that um, the shoebox to me and, um, you know, I think that there could have been some creative work done at the corners, certainly. Um, it's it's like, re, to me, this is refacing a kitchen 
basically kitchen cabinets. They've refaced it. Um, and it's still... It's just disappointing. I, I'm not going to redesign it for them. And I understand that there is a uh, financial aspect to this. And, and that's, I also think that should be balanced with the location. And I don't know what the other business this person owns is, but this is, to me, a, a prime location in Corte Madera. And it should be, it should say something more about the town than I'm a refaced kitchen. I can. I, I mean, we put more design into the to the restroom that was planned in the town park <laughs> than is being just refaced here. Valerie, you're going to say something. Yeah, I was just going to add again. I don't want to design it, obviously, for you guys, but. I do have an opinion. So the, you know, like you can look into powder coated black metal for the windows, right? To improve it, like having the like bigger contrast, maybe the down um, that material for the wainscoting, maybe that's becomes more wood-like. Again, look at the inspiration at the down center, what they have done with the landscaping around fills, right? Like that's kind of your closest location. It looks really nice and it looks what, you know, how majority of the spaces look around. It's not so cold um, as proposed here, not as gray. So again, I don't want to design, but you can get some inspiration that is out there that have, I hate the word trendy, but have more of a trendy look um, of what the retail businesses are around this town. Is it, may I ask, is it the scale of the materials like a, the blankness of the walls is it is it if it was sided with a hardy backer that would be the same price or something that made it feel a little residential is that was kind of bugging you ladies as as <laughs> well, no, i mean i'm not to use the word ladies but I, uh, no but <laughs> really, it doesn't even sound that way but I'm, it, 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 is that it is, that it? Mind, um, is, is it the scale of the materials um like like the stuff and i think it's just bland and it's just I mean, you know, Margaret referred to the two boats. It does I look, it does look warehousey, right? It yeah. looks very like a commercial warehouse. You know, I walk into the town center. You're in the parking lot, like the back part, the Safeway parking lot, that area, and you walk up that sort of uh, hallway pathway, and there are murals painted there, and they're imaginative. And then there's a place um, near Rite Aid, I think, where there's like just a very, like almost a fake facade up there with some kind of funny thing painted coming out of it, you know, a mural. And um, it, it's just, it makes it, it has a personality. Mm -hmm. It says, this is a, a welcome place we we have some kind of imagination about things we you know it can be pulled in with the landscaping you know a mural painted on that blank flat wall um some of that trump die um, kind of aspect that would be changing the building it wouldn't be all that expensive but it would it would tie in the town center and what goes on there to, to what's here. Um, Just another example, not to say that the gas station needs it, not to give you ideas for that, but Phil's, for instance, has like an Instagram wall right next to it, right? I, again, you're not Phil's, you're not, you're, not, you're not creating that vibe. But just to Margaret's point, there is something characteristical about every space that goes into the town center and I feel like this one is missing it in general. Um, I'm going to interject and say we can't make this like the town center, but it could have much more personality. Those murals were there since the 80s, I think. Something like that. 80. Oh, they're not since the 80s. Um, so, but it could have um, a, more of a warmer wood personality to those. And I, I think 
Valerie's comment about a little color pop on some things or and some warmer colors might help. Um, so um, we or some wood, horizontal wood, like to put around the planters at town center or something like that. Um, there, there could be an approach to change this cool, cold appearance, even though I think it will look like a new building with the eventually um, walls on it. It, it. We have to decide whether we're going to require them to change this exterior to something a little different or that they can run with this. So uh, maybe Monty has some ideas. Uh, well, I, I might. Uh, one thing that might help, and, and there's a, on the landscape plan, there's this. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar with dwarf heavenly bamboo and what the height habit is of that, but one thing that could help would be on these, um, both on the, on the southern facade, they have some plants. Uh, so if those plants were, uh, I don't know if they're planted in the ground or they're in pots, but you know, that would soften that whole lower wainscoting area. And even on the west facade, uh, where the blank wall is, if they had a trellis with vines on it, you know, I think the landscaping could help soften a lot of the building, uh, but not if it's just, you know, something two feet high along the base of the building. So that would be something to consider too. I, I agree. And having, again, changing slightly the color would um, match the town center. And town center has a lot of valleys. The Safeway has you know, beautiful trellis also around the just up and greenery to the area. Okay, so when we're looking at this um, on the west elevation, there is a lot of solid wall over there. Um, on the south elevation, there's a low wainscoting there. Mm -hmm. And on the east elevation, it's a blank wall. So <clears throat> if those elevations had the ability to grow something on the walls um, that would change that appearance dramatically in a very short period of time. Molly Stones has a has a uh, plant wall. I think as you go in the that. entrance of Molly Stone. Yeah. Well, I don't mean a plant wall, but something to grow on, like uh, grow fig on it. Like uh, you know, when Sephora went in. Jasmine, yeah. We uh, lamented the fact that the the yeah, the uh, fig that was on that building was scraped off, and now it's completely back and covered the wall there. It's made a huge difference from what was that blank wall, white wall. Now it's back, and that was in a couple of years that that came back. So we can ask that that occur, um, and I would endeavor to you know put that in here that they change that plan let staff approve it with either trellis or a new plant list to grow on the wall or, or even a plant that has a habit that's not very broad but very grows really you know vertical um, again i'm well, not i'm not the landscape the architect the thing does isn't that the plant yeah. you're talking yeah. about yeah, just, yeah. Take, it yeah. sticks it to just it. goes up very fast um planted at, at our house on uh, block walls and it's completely covered um, and there's no more block wall. It's a fig wall. It works really well. It would also help to add some um, light sconces that are shooting down as well. Like if, let's say you have, again, change, changing to the powder-coated black frame, you can have also, you know, kind of like darker powder-coated black sconces, light sconces on the exterior to break up between the planting that could also help and make it a little bit more softer without. Jim, I was just uh, wondering, I, I don't think that the powder coated black uh, storefront would cost any more money. If the ownership would be open to a different color palette if it would be approved today. But it didn't seem like that would be an economic it's, yeah, it doesn't have to be powder coated. Um, it can be a polyurethane paint. Or anodized aluminum block. Yeah. I mean, I, I like. I mean, they need blank walls because of the use behind it. I mean, I don't know how to get away. You know, you can't really break it up that much. I really like the idea of, of some sort of verticality with the landscaping. Uh, again, it helps economically. It's not a 
cost to the building and, it, and it's going to really soften up the building as you drive up to it for sure those are two great ideas okay i still don't like the reveals it, it just reminds me of something cheap <laughs> uh, it just reminds me of like when drive it came out on commercial buildings and everybody had it right. yeah but yeah, i know um so what i'm hearing is that um we could add this uh, to this uh, application and say that they uh, provide a uh, creeping fig or equal to go on the side of the building and um, they plant it at the west and at the east and that they have plant material in front of the south elevation across that wainscoting that has some verticality to it there that not in front of the windows not maybe, in front of the windows but, but to the right yeah. where that solves Jim's problem right one of them. <laughs> yeah, lots of problems. Okay. So that's that would be something we can do with this. Um, we have the hours set. We can do it with um, this add to that about the landscaping. The street tree, uh, Tracy and her dialing for history could tell us what the, <laughs> the trees are. Um, or I can just call Bob Bundy right now. But, yeah. Um, uh, he might even be listening for all I mean, I ask him to listen. Do you want to see the street trees or do you want to hear me read them to you? I can, I can Go ahead. show them. Uh, oh, really? You got a thing. Yeah, got the thing. I knew it. I knew she'd get it. <laughs> These kids, they can find stuff fast. While she's doing that, do you mind repeating the landscaping changes you're requesting? So I have creeping fig on the south or on the side. The west and the east. On the west and the east? Yes. And so that covers the plant material on the east as well? Uh, that would Creeping fig can go in addition to any planting material because it doesn't take a lot of space to plant it. Um, but I would plant it in... Um, at least every four or five foot it just comes in little pieces and they have to train it on the wall and um, it can be it'll take off in no time and then is there anything on the north side that you um, requested as far as changes that big flat that big. it's a blank wall they got landscaping in the back though, right? Yeah. It's between the town center and the right. What we're thinking is that the landscaping plan can come back to you. Um, as you know, depending on the rest of your comments, but this is something that we could even put on a consent agenda just so you can confirm it meets what you'd like, but I we just want to confirm what exactly you would like. Okay. So that right, the good question. What happens to the north side of the building? Do we leave it alone? It's all concrete back there right now. They'd have to dig things up and create plant pockets or just put stuff in pots outside the building there and let or, it grow up. Or build a just a retaining box all across there. Can you do that? Like a raised garden kind of thing. Yeah. They could put some, uh, 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 they wouldn't need a continuous, but I think some pots every five or ten, five or eight feet would be uh, helpful to providing some greenness on that. I think they did that over at the Marin Mart on one side. Yeah. Whatever it's called now, Larks for Landing. If you're comfortable, we can work with the applicant and bring something back to you yes. on that landscaping plan. Okay. Good. And, and I think you're restricted on the turning, uh, the backup, the backup space. Uh, yeah. um, so Tracy, you got some images there. Great mind. And these are planted 
um, adjacent to the pond by Neil Cummins and then on the Bay Trail. Um, and since the landscape plan would be coming back, um, whichever one is suggested, we could obviously provide a thumbnail of, of that particular one. And these are not required street trees. These are just suggested because these are homeowners planting these green yards. Need the beautification community so. Go back up to the top. Yes. Well, there's a picture of a crepe myrtle there with a canopy, but um, what are you thinking of these trees, uh, Daniel? So, again, I don't know the, what the full habit would be, but the red maple with ginkgo, uh, I don't know the I don't know the Grecian laurel, but, you know, difference between a tree that grows to 25 or 35 feet versus 12 feet to 15 feet. That's the difference. There's one big difference between a canopy and then canopy tree is going to spread out and not not look like a lollipop, uh, which you know, um, like the laurel there. So it's upright, conical. So sort of, again, these pictures are young trees, so you really would want to see more pictures of more mature trees, but. Um, yeah, the laurels uh, grow slowly, typically, um, and take forever to get to size, whereas the maples are, and it says they're uh, rapid growth. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, to your point, I would go for a laurel, but, <clears throat> right. and then the uh, one above, Tracy, the, um, well, the crepe myrtle growth rate slow, 12 to 25, so, so it's not going to be much of a tree for a long time. Yeah. So the maple would achieve that much faster. And I don't know. Again, I'd be interested in knowing what what's on the east side at the town center who's planted. Uh, but you know, looking at them, they're more like the red maple in terms of habit than the great mark. And that would match the rest of the timber phase as that? well. It would match and the rest of the timber phase. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. Okay. We could say whatever that tree is, they have to they should yeah. match that tree. Um, there are people here who can tell us what that tree is with a little investigation. <laughs> um, so. Amy was suggesting they come back. Perhaps they come back yeah. to the landscape. Right, and I just want to provide that yep. direction here. So. Yeah. Um, I would I would vote for the maple to your point. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, do we want to and then add some pots on the south side of the building, or does the sit the landscaping at the uh, property line with the big trash enclosure back there um, cover that south or the north side of the building? Um, you can see it. Um, Aren't those hedges like six feet tall back there? The hedges that are between the chargers and the yeah, pretty tall. They're they're tall. Yeah, you can't see. Yeah, I I'm not so sure where you where you view that from, except maybe the closest parking spaces. Right. So I I don't have any problem with. Okay. I think it's more like a garden. Raised, uh, raised garden along the facade. It's, it's, yeah, it's not really needed uh, to, uh, and to Daniel's point, uh, and that hedge on town center property blocks it. You can't even see it when you're driving down Tamil, uh, Tamil Vista. You can't see it. How about the east facade? Yeah, we would have them put the fig on yeah. that east facade. Okay. All right, so color. We want to leave it with these nice, cool colors, or do we want to get something warmer? Gentlemen, ladies. You're something trouble, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already tiptoeing out of here. <laughs> uh, I don't have a comment about the colors. Okay, I'm I'm fine with the colors with the added planting. 
Yeah. So, uh, the only thing is, I, I know uh, Valerie had suggested something about the storefront. I don't know if anybody aligns with changing store. Is that, are you considering a mill finish on this, a silver finish um, from the renderings, or are you, you know? Even though 12 months out, they are just replacing them and upgrading them, but it wasn't, we were intending to replace. Um, uh, it looked like it was okay. a totally new system. We're, we're sort of getting out of our uh, zone here in the official way here. If you would step up to the microphone and we could ask you a couple of questions about this. Um, uh, okay. So um, I noticed in the layout of the windows that the window layout changed from the existing somewhat to the new. So in the Maybe it's just the representation in the drawings that the upper windows above the door look bigger in the new uh, elevations than in the old elevations. Are they staying the same? So the so the structure, so the structure itself, and it's um, a still structure. So it's the walls are actually little still members, and has a siding on it. What we're going to do. We can't impose a lot of load on this structure if we want to try to keep it or use it. So the idea is these panels are going to be, the way they're installed is they put a a channel, horizontal channel on the existing metal stud walls and across the existing storefront. And then they put this new finish on it. So it's a lightweight facade. It's going to be attached to the existing structure. So we're not proposing to replace the windows behind that structure. So the look will look different. And on the inside, it will be drywall. But the windows, the idea is not to remove windows because that integrity of that structure, we're trying to keep it intact. No, I get it. But there's a different, a slightly different layout to it in the new. So some things are going to change. So what we're going to do is like the the siding will go up higher, like on the left elevation. The storefront went all the way down to the bottom. Now we're closing the foot, the siding up higher so that we can close off or reduce the overall blazing. So the question is that if you're modifying those window members, because it looks like they are modified in the mm -hmm. drawings, they're not. Okay. So I think those are... Uh, what are they now? Are they white or are they milky? Yeah, they're uh, um, anodized or it's clear, the old aluminum clear. Okay. Clear. So it's a mill finish on them. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know how you can modify this. Yeah, I, I don't see it. Uh, I, you can't modify a window system like this. Not, We're not modifying the window system. We're covering it with the siding. No, I know, but what we're saying here is that when you look at the new elevation compared to the old elevation, there's a change in the layout of the windows. You added a side light to the door as well, so which is part of the is, curtain this system. This is different for the layout. Okay, so we're, we're yeah, where we're adding the new door in the, on the south elevation, that will have to be adjusted. But on the sides, on this west side, and I believe the, yeah, on the west side, we're just, we got to remove a door that's there as well. But you also, yeah, you're also removing the side light and the door. Right. And you're reducing, you're also widening the width, unless the elevation isn't correct, but you're widening the width of the far left pane of the window. It's not fitting where the side light, where the door is, right? Like it, it is wider. So it is, to me, it's like, like rather than preserving the older system, it will be cheaper for you to replace to the new system and do the stick build with the uh, new mullion system. Um, okay, so the intent, I mean, it might be not matching on your elevation, I guess, but the intent is to keep the storefront windows as they are and then cover and remove the door because there's a door on the west side, which we are don't. But then need. your width would be consistent yeah. with the existing elevation. And right, right now it's. It's not even consistent within its own elevation. Right. It's not equal, equal, equal. So I think what happened is um, the idea is that we're trying to keep the storefront as it is. But when you move the window out and it doesn't, like there's, they're not going to be centered or symmetrical anymore. So that's what we're like, well, do we, I guess that's a question. Do we redo the storefront and make it a symmetrical? That was not the intent, but 
To be honest, I would just do estimate. If I were you, I would just do an estimate because sometimes it would be more expensive for you to keep the existing system rather than just putting the new stick build there. Right. Um, and, you know, nowadays these systems are not as expensive. I would just revise it just to do a little exercise because if you do have an ability to update, upgrade to a newer system, you have an ability to control a little bit of Mullions. where you joins and mullions and make an equal trust, the building. Yeah, trust building. So the if it's mill finish, you have the opportunity to either, as Valerie says, change it all out, which expensive, but you could paint all of this frame. Right. You could paint it all, and because you, you make some modification, add some new to it, change the door. I think you're going to end up adding some members to this elevation. You can paint the whole system and be done with it, right? Mm -hmm. And then right. paint it with a decent paint, like I say, a polyurethane or something. And then you can change the color. So instead of mill finish, a black or something would go with this. Um, I think that a instead of the mill finish, a, a dark color would be appropriate for that. Um, okay. So, I'm, I mean, I'm confused now because the, I assumed this was a new window system because it's so different than what's existing and it's you know i i don't see how you can possibly take what's existing and make this out of it so i want some clarity about what's really going to be the I, facade. I think what you're saying is putting tracks across the across the actual mullions and they're going to hang the hang the the size material on out so they're leaving that and putting this in front of it? That's, I think that's what you're but, saying. But there is no mullion. Put up the picture of what's existing there. So the existing siding looks taller than the proposed siding. Um, your mullion is going to be lower, at least from, again, from your representation here. There's sure. There are no dimensions here, but even visually, mm -hmm. the wainscoting on the existing building looks much higher than what you're proposing in the new one. So there is no way you can even, I mean, what are you, you're saying you're closing the glazing, but you're not really closing the glazing, you're adding more glazing because it will be lower, right? Your first elevation looks like it's about maybe 36 and above, and the other one looks more like Can you know, 26. Yeah, so the idea again, okay, so the idea is that we we're trying to save as much of that building as much as possible. So the idea was not to remove the mullions, but to cover them. Now, where we had to put the doors and move the door to the center, yeah, at that point, we have to redo that mullion. We have to do sock the, the existing wall and storefront and put in that new door. So possible of that door that section may be new but like on the west side if you look at the vertical mullions so that, those windows that are there are blocked up now we are going to attach the siding with channels on that side to give you the new look without having to tear out the walls if i tear out that storefront system i'm most likely will have to take out those those mullions that are there and so now i'm having to do a whole new wall structural wall with the windows and so now that just, it's not as cheap as you think it is. I mean, if I have to replace that whole wall compared to just leaving it in place. So, but again, it's all based on um, what our inspection, you know, we did a, a visual inspection of this thing and we, we felt our structural engineer and our designers, we felt that we could apply this facade to this existing structure and give us a facade renovation. A facade is basically slapping on these panels and this look, but making it, designing it so it wouldn't look like it was slapped on. It would look like it was actual a structure. So that's the end result. It's going to look like it's actually a framed wall, but it's not a framed wall. It's going to be paneling on the existing walls. Again, for economical purposes, um, I mean, these are all great ideas you guys have, but everything you're suggesting is adds dollar to the whole project. And so, you know, it's, you know, we'd love to tear it down and build this great town center here, but we just don't have the budget or the applicant doesn't have a budget to do that. So he's trying to beautify it. You guys have great suggestions. I, I mean, I wrote everything down. I'm like, okay, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. Um, but there are some stuff I can't do, or at least we'll consider looking at it 
but I can't condition that. You guys, if you condition us to tear it out and put it in, then that's an added cost that right. we'll have to do. So now, Tracy, thanks for putting this up. This photo explains a lot. And so what it also explains is that the drawing of the existing elevation is not accurate. And what the new elevation shows is closer to this. So using the this the system you're talking about, where the door is on the left side of that uh, elevation there, they would take that door out in the side panel and then that means that they put in a new horizontal mullion there and the wainscoting goes under it. That right. makes perfect sense. I get that. So, or right? That's what you do here. That's correct. Yeah. And then the door that's in the middle of the building there is going to remain um, for this new elevation, it looks like. one. Right. Yeah. Right. So then, and mm -hmm. over to the right, I know there's another door over there that is uh, obscured by the gas pump in this image so that door comes out and you're putting in a fixed piece of glass over there okay so it makes more sense i get it you not tearing out all this stuff what we're saying is paint the frames instead of mill finish hopefully you know and then it will look better than mill finish what i like if request if it's possible is that we have no problem trying to match town center as much as possible, painting the mullion dark, adding all the stuff you guys are asking, the the grids, the the ivy, you know, all that stuff is doable. And I know the applicant would be willing to do that, you know, within reason, as long as we can still we keep it within our budget. I think a lot of the stuff can be added. Structurally, when you start getting to that, then that's where it's questionable. But like the trellis with the vines, that's, that's uh, definitely doable. We can't do anything on the north side. The pots and that's going to mess up our uh, encroach on our backup for the vehicles, for the trucks, and for the vehicle as far as parking. So, but you guys already know we have a big old six foot screen already. So, I think the north side should be okay. Um, this is what we request, guys. Is that we we want to we've been working with staff all this time, and we took your considerations last time, and we're willing to take it now, but. We're trying to get this. We're hoping that you guys can condition it, approve it with conditions. We are being, we're already working with staff. They know what you guys want and they'll make sure, and we'll make sure we're working with them. I just don't want to prolong this whole thing again and have us come back. I mean, my landscape architect personally talked to Tracy about these trees and he said, Hey man, we'll, we'll be put in whatever you want. I mean, we're, the trees is not a big deal for us. We'll do what the city asks, but for us to have to come back to no, show you a landscape plan, just okay. yeah, we can we can do it that way. I believe. So uh, I think we can condition this and get you down the road. Right, appreciate it. Yeah, so I think we're under the. I I understand the glazing system now a little better now that we talked it through. Tracy brought that photo up. I get it. Um, and we we're not asking you to tear any of that out. It's just you're moving some elements around there, adding horizontal mullions and changing a few pieces of glass in there to get that done and providing the backing for the wainscoting across the front. I get that. That works. And does that include the uh, double door for ADA knees? Well, it wasn't a double door. It was it's just door a... operators, yeah. And and more inclusive design on the interior. Hey, John, <laughs> okay, so if I can comment really quick yeah. on that, the challenge with automatic doors is that if they're structurally have a big old motor and it's really tough to put an, an automatic door in an existing structure like that because that automatic motor to do that it requires structural we've done and believe me i know we have a structural frame and it has to be able to support that movement so how do you suggest someone in a wheelchair get no in? the chair per code we have to make everything accessible no it's it's open but how how does someone push open a heavy door and get their wheelchair every door in california has low pounds minimum pounds that we have to provide so the code requires us to do that this whole building is going to be completely ada accessible even the access all the aisles we just showed it graphically to give you an idea of what the inside is it might change I mean, once we get the inside, but it's all going to be accessible. I mean, we understand that's a big deal. And we, the building department, believe me, is going to be honest on make sure we meet yeah. the code. 
I commented only because you provided the dimensions. So if you are going to progress the interiors, right? Like I'm, I'm not gonna even require yeah. that. But it, as long as you understand that it should be inclusive, and we even even to refrigerators as well, because right now it isn't. But for, in regards to the doors, um, you can probably do. I mean, you know what you need to do. Like you can do like a delayed closing and all of the kinds of things for a wheelchair to operate it. Yeah, I mean, there's sweeps and all. You have to provide time, how, how fast the door can close. All that is all code. And we have to move that. So we, uh, we can't make you put in a, a, a hydraulically operated door. Um, it'll, it'll be per code. Those guys will make sure that it functions per code. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Thank you. Um, here we are. We've got um, a basic set of agreements about the hours among most of us, a majority of us for 6 to uh, 11. Um, we've got the planting agreement for the west and east side and fig planted. Um, um, some additional planting on the front that will grow up to the right of the uh, glazing. Um, staff can uh, get that into this landscape plan. I want to propose the uh, maple for the street trees. And um, we're going to ask that they paint the uh, mullions a bronze or dark color or black uh, to go with this. Uh, Jim uh, brought up something about the delivery hours. Uh, Tracy, do you require, recall what we uh, conditioned uh, the other uh, applicants for, for uh, delivery hours? I know. Okay. And that would be my set of um, conditions for um, motion. Are we doing material pellet? The warmer material pellet. That would be a subjective uh, design for us, or do you want staff to just take it in hand and get to a warmer color? I'm comfortable with staff looking at it. Margaret. Staff might not be comfortable with it, but. Increase um. <laughs> at school total line store were committed Monday to Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. So that would be a condition of approval for deliveries. So if we were going to direct these guys for colors, and I'm looking at this color. <laughs> this is a, a nice uh, variegated gray. Kind of, um, then they have, the, can you hand that board over here? So, you know, they got the top color, which is a, a nice white, or what do you call it? Southern Breeze is kind of an off white okay. color okay. this this is supposed to be this color of block oh, no, this is not that color the finish that actual material can get made in the color that we will uh -huh. so, matter so it's this color right? Chip right here. okay kind of it's, it's a silvery brown mm -hmm. and this color is what There's nothing there. Uh, it's on the bottom right there. It's a... This stuff? Oh, yeah. that's the block. That's color. the block, right. So, no, this... that's the, so that is a panel. It's the same thing as that panel is called. They didn't call it the block, but it's a, it's a panel that's smooth and it's painted that color. So this is the texture for this. I thing. got it. Okay. Confusing. So we just put that little color chip to so better represent of what that color would be. That pink color, that um, that panel. Is this not the color? Color, that is the color on this type. That is the color. This is the color. Yeah, we kind of showed that sample as a um, for the okay. material. Okay. You can have what the material. So if we're if never mind this thing in the middle. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, a warm white, and that's a warm gray brown. And I'm fine with those two colors. <laughs> like, so the colors are seductive. 
So that's just a representation of what the material kind of is. So uh, I'm cu curious. So, so are, you're doing a custom color to like a Benjamin War color? Yeah. And it'll make any color you want. Again, the printout didn't really give it justice, so we added the color to the GPI better idea. I had to be looking at it. Yeah, color it says yeah, here stone gray. I, my opinion is that those colors are nice. I don't mind these colors, but I do mind them next to the town center that have a much warmer palette. So that's where I'm just not seeing consistency with other buildings that are around that area. I would love for the building to be a little bit more integrated into what is close to it. With that said, again, I don't object this particular palette if you guys do decide that this is absolutely what you love but um from my opinion perspective here i would love to see more integration that that's all are you, are you speaking more of materials like the like the uh like the, more of those what, terracotta the, style right like the uh, what what our where phil's is like in the further back there they do have a little bit more of those reddish warmer Mm -hmm. color wood I, I think i mean you need to also consider the colors of the roof there if you're not changing the roof. and i think if you went with more of a bronze look you know maybe like a reddish bronze kind of thing i mean there is a building right behind yeah. it right that has yeah. three distinct colors and you can basically see. this color the southern breeze right This color, to me, this is pretty close. Kind of a dead, more of a dead zone. Yeah. If you look at the corner of you know, that building in the back, yeah. it would have been more like that. If you want to go to the darker color, the field color of that building in the back. Um, that looks like the same color. The town center in the back has some color. The corner's color. Yeah. And then the field color. Well, we had a, the cornice color to be the light color for our group. If you're asking us to go with a little bit darker or more of a warmer brown color, again, in that picture, you can see where the windows are back there. Yeah. But how they're building. And as something like that, we can do that. Yeah. And I think like the contrast also, the um, maybe the color is close, right? It still feels a little bit cooler than that color, but then the. Um, um the wainscoting the panels uh down below they do look a little bit again a little bit cooler like fills for instance have yeah. more of that darker warmer brown type of wainscoting on it as well um which which brings that warmth to the town center throughout also it helps to have that wood that is around it as well um but, but this is something when you're going to be doing the um raised garden, maybe this is where you can explore that the same wood as well. Um, it will elevate the look a little bit. <laughs> it's pretty close. So that's stone gray is yeah. what it says here, PBG. So that's a warmer color than that printout right there. So I think that the color is a warmer brown, but it's not that far off from that. Right. Yeah. So Okay. Warmer direction, kids. Um, match closer to that. Give it to staff and say, do it. Okay. That's what we'll do. We'll tell them town center color, brown, change the this PPG 95 to the closer to the um, town center color. Just to be clear, you're saying that the field color of the town center is the what you want on the bottom. It's a well, a warmer brown toward that than what this is. A warmer brown, yeah. That's a that's a nice warm brown, but it's too light. 
it's still a contrast. What we're saying is still a contrast, but just get in the warmer scale yeah. rather than you know. All right. Yeah. All right. We've talked about a number of things. Jim has taken some notes. Um, and uh, maybe he's the guy to make the uh, motion here. Thinking about it. Might have to. And might have to speak up on this one. Let's see if I can <laughs> formulate something. Um, let me just get this straight. So I, I think we talked about, uh, Tracy, the hours that you were suggesting, were they 5 to 11 in here or were they 6 to 11? 5 to uh, 11. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna put a condition at, to make it 6 to 11 p.m. for the mini market and then 24-7 for the gas is going to remain, correct? Yes, that's what we talked about. Okay. Um, then we're going to go with plan, uh, staff suggestion to limit the beer and wine to 150 square feet. That's in the that's in the resolution. It's in the resolution, yeah. so that doesn't have to be changed. Um, we're going to request uh, the landscaping plan to change um, to add a maple tree as the street tree, tree or trees, trees, trees. Um, to the west and the east elevation, we're going to add a creeping fig or trellis or some kind of vertical growing uh, landscaping. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to ask for um, the storefront to be painted a darker color, black or or or, or dark browns. Yeah, that's all this stuff. Yeah, the window frames. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's called a storefront. Yeah, yeah, that's the name of it. And deliveries to be between seven and six p.m. to be consistent with total wine. Did we talk about? Did we talk about uh, also some vertical landscaping on the south facade where the where the stucco wall is? We talked about it, and that Jim would need to mention that also to the yeah, right yeah, of we, the. Yeah. We were talking trellis there, weren't we? Uh, or a creeping fig or trellis. Uh, so I'll just add that they can they can choose between the three different landscaping types for each one of the sides. Right. Okay. Okay. So I'll add the south there. And we're going to do nothing to the north because of turning radius, the cars. Um, the 24-7, is that a condition of that's in the resolution and it's not a condition, correct? Right. Uh, um, the 24 um, hour gas because it's possibly operating. is part of that condition already. Yeah. Okay. So that's not going to be added as a condition. There's only really three things there, Peter. Yeah. So landscaping, the, the deliveries, and then. Right. Oh, and the, and the color of the building. Use a warmer color palette. Warmer color palette, uh, warmer brown on the lower materials. Just on the lower? Yeah. Was there a change to the tree at the West Planter? Chinese pistache over there. I think both both trees were going to be maples, correct? Yeah. There's two street trees at the South um, Planter Strip, and then there's one Chinese pistache in the West Planter. On the West, yeah. The street trees will change to maple, and then you want the stash to be maple as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where's it at? That's this big guy. The stash is represented here. That's the big one here. So that's the center of it. And that's where that tree would go. I have to defer to Daniel. Um, study this landscape plan a little bit. Do you want that pistachio tree to be a maple as well? Or would you like? I'm just trying to recall what the as a whole, there were three as we go north uh, in the in the green sward at the town center. And I can't remember what species they are, but I don't think they're flowering trees. They're what? They're very young as well. Yeah, they're very young. Um, but again, ideally, you know, I'd like to see some consistency 
in these major town streets. Um, again, again, we leave that to staff. Again, I, I think if you could look at the tree rows that are on the town center west elevation. The ones that were, they were put in in 2014, they were removed some large trees and replanted these. Is that what we're talking about? Those particular trees? I think they're, they're, no, I have pictures of them, but I don't, I don't know what they you are. You say that we're going to match them? Yeah. We're going to match the west side trees and we're going to add, we don't want to match the, the ones um, on Tamalpais. We're going to add those, make those the maples. Maple. Yeah. Okay. Seconds here. Yeah, they're pretty big. I don't know what they are. We can look that up and have that yeah. match. Yeah, okay. We're going to turn in the pumpkins here in about three minutes, so well, we'd have to take a vote to continue. So, okay, I think I got it. I stumbled. All right. Pick me up. Of course, we're here to help. <laughs> and do I add the conditions uh, before um, the resolution or after? And making a motion to adopt the resolution and then list the changes that you with the following changes. Okay. Okay. Um, I move to adopt the resolution um, with the following conditions. Uh, the mini mart hours will be between 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. Um, deliveries will be limited to 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, We'd like to see a storefront system that is black or a dark bronze color. Um, we would like the lower material of the facade to be a warmer color palette. Um, on the landscaping, um, we're gonna request that the landscaping on the southwest and east sides of the building either have a creeping fig, some sort of trellis with a vine, uh, or uh, some sort of vertical, uh, vertical uh, growing landscaping. Um, we're going to request the trees that are on Tamalpais to be, uh, was it a red maple? Red maple. And the trees on the west side on Madeira Tamal Vista to be, um, to match whatever uh, the town center had planted uh, a few years ago. We'll let staff uh, research that. Um, did I miss any of the conditions? No, I don't think so. Okay. So, so what, moved. What were the the so, days of delivery hours? He, he did mention that. Oh, I did not do the days. Um, sorry, the days I believe are Monday through Saturday. Um, would you like me to read the resolution then? After now that the conditions are out. Uh, in the matter of design review application PL22-0078 for the proposed exterior renovation of the existing gasoline service station building, replacement of trash enclosure and landscaping at 700 Tamil Pius Drive and conditional use permit application PL23-0055 for the modification of the interior of an existing building to remove the auto repair and service component to accommodate its full service as a mini mark. All right, then. Do we have a second for this? Second. Okay. Thank you. Let's call the roll on this. Commissioner Kenny? Yes. Commissioner Beshoyer? Yes. Commissioner Bandel? No. And Vice Chair Rizzo? 
Yes. And Chair Chase. Yes. Okay. Rights. Are there any rights to go with this appeal period? Thank you guys very much. The decision of the Planning Commission may be appealed within 10 calendar days of the decision. Appeal forms can be found on the town's website or at the planning division at town hall. An appeal uh, costs $300. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, getting through this. So normally we go into reports and planning staff. Do you guys have anything you want to say? We don't have a report tonight. Okay. Let's adjourn this meeting. <laughs>